I want to thank you and all the committee members for your very gracious comments about the training tragedy overnight uh, uh, and the uh, uh, specter of, of loss to families. Uh, we tend to, I think, understandably think of uh, danger in military service at, in those times when our when our uh, military men and women are forward deployed and in kinetic environments. And as I said, that's natural. But what happened last night, I think, underscores <clears throat> the very real uh, circumstances that men and women who put that uniform on face each and every day. Uh, and we are enormously in their debt. And in this case, as, as you and your members have noted, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the families. And as an Army family, we will stand together. So thank you for uh, your comments. Um, it is amazing how much can change in a year. Uh, over the last 12 months, we've seen the geopolitical landscape morph really at an astonishing pace, from renewed aggression by Russia and increased threats from North Korea to gains by radical terrorists in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen, not to mention the fight against Ebola. The demand for your army to tackle contingencies around the world has grown at an alarming rate. Far from being foreseeable, our requirements have been more unexpected, our enemies more unpredictable, and our ability to handle multiple simultaneous operations more uncertain. And yet, with such volatility and instability around the world, America's army is faced yet again with an enemy here at home, the return of sequestration, unprepared units, unmaintained equipment, untrained soldiers. Ladies and gentlemen, our army, your army, faces a dark and dangerous future unless this Congress acts now to end these ill-conceived and inflexible budget cuts. Moreover, and I want to be clear here, every installation, every component, and nearly every program will feel the brunt of these cuts. Under sequestration by 2019, we'll reduce our end strength to unconscionable levels, likely losing another six BCTs and potentially a division headquarters, not to mention the impacts to associated enablers, contracts, facilities, and civilian personnel. It is our shared responsibility to jealously preserve the gains in readiness, modernization, and training that we've achieved through your critically important support. And in that regard, let me share with you some of the accomplishments of America's Army this past year. As Russian-backed forces rolled into Ukraine and ex-Crimea and threatened regional stability, our soldiers rapidly deployed to Eastern Europe in a demonstration of U.S. commitment and resolve. From Latvia and Lithuania to Poland and Estonia, soldiers from the 173rd Airborne and the 1st Cavalry showed the world that America would stand with our NATO allies and respond to unbridled aggression. In West Africa, as thousands suffered from the scourge of Ebola, your army acted. Elements of several units led by the 101st Airborne provided command and control, equipment, and expertise to support efforts to stop this deadly and destabilizing disease. In response to rapid gains by ISIL, your soldiers quickly returned to Iraq to advise and assist security forces in turning the tide on this bar barbaric group of radical terrorists. In the Pacific, thousands of soldiers and civilians supported operations to strengthen our partnerships and increase our substantial presence. Today, the headquarters of nine active Army and two Guard divisions are committed to combatant commands. In some, as you noted, Mr. Chairman, 144,000 soldiers are deployed, forward stationed, or committed, including, as you noted, 19,000 mobilized reservists. Moreover, we've done all this while continuing to transform our formations, making them leaner, more agile, and far more lethal. As all of you know so well, such extraordinary success comes at a price, for in the end, the young lieutenant leading his or her platoon on the battlefield, the sergeants training and mentoring their soldiers, the invaluable civilian workforce laboring countless hours to support them, and the young family waiting patiently at home are all human. The stress of war, multiple deployments, and unpredictable requirements doesn't change in the face of indiscriminate funding cuts. Through it all, we have and we will remain committed to supporting the needs of our warriors, from programs to increase resilience and improve behavioral health to the prevention of sexual assault and protection of victims from retaliation. We'll keep faith with our soldiers. But rest assured, the return of sequestration will directly impact critical installation and family programs Army-wide. Members, simply put, we need the President's budget 
Our $126.5 billion request is some $6 billion over the potential sequester level and is specifically designed to preserve our modest gains in readiness over the last year and take care of your soldiers. And if approved, we will invest $3.4 billion above the fiscal year 15 funding levels in training, sustainment, and installation programs that directly support combat readiness and $2.6 billion in research, development, and acquisition to equip soldiers to protect key parts of the industrial base and support new innovations. Moreover, this request seeks vital reforms to compensation and force structure that will ensure the funding needed to support near-term readiness and help place the Army on a predictable path to balance. From modest pays, changes to pay and allowances to our aviation restructuring initiative, our reforms are both necessary and prudent to sustain the readiness of our forces and move the Army toward eventual balance. I cannot emphasize enough how these critical reforms and funds meet are necessary to ensuring that your Army has sufficiently trained and ready soldiers to protect our nation. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, this is a, a historic moment. We need to stop talking and start acting. We need wisdom, not words. We need results, not rhetoric. And as I said last year, we need predictability, not politics. As we ex face extreme instability around the world, we must have certainty here at home. Your soldiers, and I know you agree, deserve no less. We must have an end to sequestration this year, and we must have this budget. In closing, on behalf of the nearly 1.3 million men and women of America's Army, Active Guard, Reserve, and Civilian, thank you, each of you, for your continued oversight, partnership, leadership, and support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to your questions.